Today, we take a break from the usual political talk to look at how some startups and small and medium uh, enterprises are faring their respective industries. How are they coping with the business environment? What are their challenges? And how well are they growing? To get answers to these questions, I'll talk to different personalities in the course of the interview. And you are watching The Hard Truth. My name is Nana Akusia Kunedu. Uh, Santi Samuels and we are proudly proudly brought to you by Murphy Homes, Dawa Industrial City and Paul's Fitness Gym. You're watching The Hard Truth and I mentioned earlier we're doing something different today. We're talking to startup businesses. How well are they doing? Are they making money? Well, um, the, the government says that uh, the economy is robust. So we want to find out from some private uh, new SMEs and uh, to know how they're faring. I have with me the Chief Executive Officer of uh, Money Hill Consult, Mani Sumwa. How are you, sir? I'm fine. Are you okay? Yes, please. It, it's not the usual harsh. You don't be scared at all. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for, for coming today. Welcome. I'm, I'm curious, how did uh, Money Hill Consult start? And I want to know the mission of the company. What's the mission? Well, our mission is just to provide um, um, standardized uh, meals mm. for institutions, uh, especially schools and corporate bodies. Um, this has to come uh, by after we realized that we, we didn't have a standardized provision of meals to schools uh, and to institutions. I see. So there is a high level of uh, competition in the food industry, uh, which is one of the factors that you know makes the food business difficult to even start. So what made you believe that your startup would work? What we are doing at Money's Hill, I think it's, um, it's different. We're not doing the regular walk-ins um, with the food industry. Most of the food industry are just walk-ins. You just walk in, you get your meals, and then um, others are also taking orders for functions. What we have narrowed our service down is to provide service for schools. Mm. If I say schools, we are looking at uh, from the basic school, secondary school, and the universities. And these are a group of people that come together um, for the course of studies. So is it like some special foods you provide to these schools and yeah. peers? What do you yeah. give them? Yeah, so we, we had to understand the age group of the people who are in the school. So for example, if we are doing for basic school, yep. we know they are between the ages of 6 to like uh, 12, um, uh, 15. And so we narrowed our menu down to their age. And so we do specialized meals for them. Um, we have what we call the eat well table. That uh, explains what a child should eat at a particular sitting. And so the percentage of carbohydrates, protein, and the fruits um, so they have to take. How many times do these students eat in a day? Okay, so we have, the school has its uh, program. And so we fit our program with the school's program. That's the snack break and then the lunch break, mm. depending on the schedule of the school. If it's a full school, they have the lunch, the snack, lunch, and dinner. Mm. Um, so in the basic school where they go to school and go back home, they have the snack break and then the lunch break. Mani, you, you, you did mention earlier that uh, you have a unique service, but others do similar things. I mean, they serve the schools, they have, again, nutritious meals and eat. Uh, you know, within breaks and all that. So I want to find out what makes your company tick, what makes you unique from the other. I believe that it's not just provision of food, but the services we provide to the schools. With our system, we have um, a plated system. A plated system is like a course. And so when you pay for your meals, you are getting the full complement of uh, what you had to get. Is that expensive? Um, it's it, it's affordable when you come to where any schools that we operate. When a child enters the canteen and pays for lunch, you are getting your carbohydrate, you are getting protein, you get vegetables, and then you have fruits. And this, this is the complement of things we do for the children. Here, that too, the child would go and buy, say, rice a particular amount. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if a child wants to save money to buy candies uh, after school, he just goes to eat carbohydrate. <laughs> and saves the rest of the money to go and buy some candies or I buy see. some. But here you just pay and you get the full complement of it. And we have packages, we have the snack package. The but lunch this package. is in connection with the schools, not you don't do it alone. Yeah, so the school just gives us a space. Um, depending on the arrangement, the school rent out 
they are canteen to mm, us. Mm, mm. And then we are operating as sense. a separate entity from right, the school. Right. But we'll work with the school anyway. Okay. The school would arrange with us, okay, we, you can't go beyond this price because the school is absorbing some of our costs, say electricity or water or the rent. And mm. so then it, 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 it brings our costs down. And we take care of the ingredients and then the human capital, so we can able to... Right, but I, I want to know, what is your current growth uh, rate like, you know, as a company? And are you satisfied with the, you know, the rate at which you are growing? Yes, I think we are growing steadily. Um, I, I, I always want to grow um, very slowly because then you're able to build capacity well. At the moment, I have three schools I'm running. Um, each school has a capacity of about 600 students. Can you mention these names? Yeah, so I am uh, currently I'm with um, SOS, I'm a minor school in Tema, and Rosharon uh, Montessori School, and then I consult also for Corey Crutch School in Akosombo. Mm. So currently these are the numbers we have. Um, we are we've applied to other schools. We are in uh, talks with other schools. But, uh, how many schools can you take at a time? As many as we get, the thing is that if the systems are set up, all we need to is to add on because we just replicate the system in the schools. But going forward, we are not even looking at being present in the school because it's capital intensive. So for example, if I have an oven and I have 10 schools, I have to get 10 ovens. So what we are doing is that in the long haul, we're getting a, um, a, a manufacturing um, um, site mm. where we just produce and then send to the school. So, for example, SOS can sign on and say, we have 600 students um, who are signed on to us. And so snack break, we do the package. We are, we are trying to come up with our packaging and all those things. So we just deliver the snack, 600 snacks to their schools. Mm. And if we're able to get to um, the long term where we are having one place of uh, uh, production, it means that you can be sure what the children are eating across the country. And so what the children are eating in Ashanti region or in Central region or Greater Accra is the same. And so we are able to also um, monitor the, the health history or, um, of the children who are eating the meals. So if the food is not healthy or for the food is healthy, and it's impacting positively on the children. It's interesting. You talked about, you know, having uh, uh, the health, uh, what is it called, um, issues or the, the health history of the student. Do you actually uh, take the health? So if it's Akusia, maybe you go in for my health history and then you give me uh, the meal that, that suits me? We have some of the children who are on special diet. And so we, we pick them individually and, and group them and then deal with them. Now, with, with us, and when we come to your school, there are certain things we don't do. For example, we don't allow fizzy drinks. Hmm. And so it is purely um, fresh juice. So we do fresh juice for them every morning. Um, there are certain drinks you will not find on our shelves in the schools. And that is what is exciting the schools to even do come on board. you think the drinks are some these are yes. natural juice? Yes, these are natural juice. So hmm. every morning, it is everything we do is fresh. The bigger thing is we are looking at providing a very well-structured school feeding program. At the moment, we have started with the public schools. Um, we are intending to get even into the public schools. The private schools you've started with? Yes, sorry, yeah, the, right. the private schools. Uh, long run, we would want to get to the public schools. Mm. And this would have to come in when we're getting support from the, uh, from the government. That is, if we want to get into the, the, the uh, public schools. What is your company's biggest threat or risk, if I, if I should put it that way? The difficulty is the, the, our mind of receiving or accepting standardized things. We are used to conventional things and sometimes it's very difficult to convince a school to buy into what you are selling, mm. you know, because they don't see, and for me, um, education is not just the classroom, it's a total thing, so you just need to convince them. And that is my, my, my biggest challenge, you know. You have to talk and talk and talk because... Yeah, and the, is, it, is it difficult securing these institutions? Is it difficult? Yeah, sometimes it becomes very difficult because you know they have a particular way of running mm. and they don't have any complaints about it. You are bringing in a new thing that is going to shoot up their prizes that parents are going to talk about and schools also want to protect the parents, especially protect their cost and so things. So it becomes very difficult for the schools to accept you. But eventually when you get in, 
they become excited because mm -hmm. you are doing things that the ordinary person will not do. So in all the schools that we are, we try to set up culinary clubs also for the children. So they take up um, after school um, lessons. So we can just, I just, just get one of my chefs to just come, we gather the children, we take them through recipe. You know, it's an uh, extracurricular thing that they, they, they do they in the school. No, no. Right. So um, is there a contact number you want to share? Okay. So um, 020-833-5667. All right. So for your food, is it just uh, what do you do? Is weddings and for engagement? And yes, we do. We yeah. do. We do that as well. So, okay. so for your weddings, engagement, parties, <laughs> whatever, uh, the way to go is uh, Money Hill Consult. You can, uh, you know, call them on 020 eight three three uh five six six seven again zero two zero eight three three five six six seven thank you so much money okay. uh we have um this chief executive officer of Man manifesi uh that'll be next on the heart we'll be right back Mike Hill Asante Abuse is the Chief Executive Officer of uh, Minafisi. Yeah. Welcome to the Heart Truth. Thank you very How much. How are you? I'm good. Are you nervous? I mean, a little bit because, I mean, this is a seat. Very, oh, no, very it's, it's a handy. very cold seat today. Definitely. We're talking about small and medium, uh, you know, enterprise. And uh, yeah. we thought Minafisi is one of the businesses, you know, ought to be head of. So yeah. I want to know, tell me about it and how did it come about? Okay, so Minafisi basically is um, an all-in-one e-commerce platform. Basically, it means that anybody at all mm -hmm. with basic English knowledge can get on our platform mm -hmm. and create their own online store like Jumia has, right, for their small business. And most importantly, be able to manage all their business processes from their uh, very intuitive and uh, simple dashboard. Um, business processes like, you know, online mobile money payment, um, discounts your orders and everything like that so basically it's a self-manageable uh, e-commerce suite you could say what was your journey like and you know how did you get here today i started minafisi because in 2016 i started um, a marketplace um, i had a problem with cost okay. trying to get um, the, the the marketplace running okay. I used the SaaS platform, so a software as a service platform just like ours, and it was charging about $149 every okay. month. Yeah, I paid for the first month because I was very enthusiastic about it, but I couldn't for the next month. So I had to get somebody to do, um, contract the developer to do it for me, and she gave me very trashy work, actually, for a lot of money. Mm. Um, and so I started thinking about um, getting into this line of... Um, business i mean the SaaS platform and looking at the pain points of um, cost and appropriate technology for so that our users can be able to interact flawlessly are you a developer yourself i am basic web um, design basically um uh, but i understand what goes into um exactly what we are doing so yeah Actually, but who is a company's ideal customer and how does a company you know currently approach them so how do you get your customers right so we are looking at smes mm -hmm. now right now the e-commerce industry is booming we have like 2.4 uh, million i mean the uh, industry figures right now is hitting 2.4 trillion dollars and it's, it's really going to yes it's really going to um you know boom in the coming years but then um uh, the, the, those who are really taking advantage of the opportunity are big companies so you could say amazon you could say Jumia, you could say um, IKEA, they are all really taking advantage of this um, opportunity here. But um, what about the small and medium sized businesses? Mm -hmm. What is their position in the future of retail? And that's what we want to give them. We want to give them a position um, or a, a, a place in the future of retail. Yes, yeah, so basically that's what we are doing you believe again you just said that the you know the most disadvantaged segment in the e-commerce market is the yeah. small and medium enterprises yeah. from your experience how easy or difficult is it for SMEs to embrace your technology well um, since our marketplace or the industry right now in our part of the world um, has uh, I, I always say there's a uh, we have a lot of marketplace noise. Mm -hmm. So it means that oh, we have marketplace noise. noise yes. So we have the big companies um, 
Tonaton and all that. So people are more, um, they know them. But then ours is like uh, this novel technology that is coming out. We are really getting good response, by the way. So not everybody is embracing what we are doing, but like as they get to understand exactly what we, we are trying to give them, they, 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 they are ready to embrace it. Right now we have like very um, amazing and enthusiastic people, you know, getting on our platform. Yeah. And even though we are launching in Ghana, we have like Nigerians sign out and all, so. Right. Um, yeah. I, I'm curious, uh, what success stories have you had with your, you know, current clientele? And that is how has your company's e-commerce solution, you know, impacted their businesses? When we started, we got somebody who runs um, a record label. I mean, he signed, he signed up to sell his music, and now he's Which looking. Which label is that? Um, Legacy Empire, mm -hmm. the underground artist. Yeah, so they are small, you know. Yeah, and so um, for them, right now, they are looking at making it a marketplace to sell um, underground the songs from underground artists. So just like a local version of iTunes. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing. We have food, a food brand that we're working. So f for some of them, we need to give them, you know, branding um, services pro bono. You know, and so it starts from somewhere, yeah. but it, it's, it's uh, exciting, you know, um, uh, it's exciting. Um, and also we are kind of bootstrapping and all. So, I mean, for me, <laughs> yeah, it's just but, but really, who are your biggest competitors and, you know, how do you differentiate yourself from yeah. them? Right. So we uh, look at Shopify. Shopify is our biggest competitor. It has a market cap of like $15 billion. So um, they're in the Western, they, they are tower based in Canada. Um, so for why our, our differentiation? So um, we're looking at, like I said, the pain points of cost. So if you come on our platform, you can get one set of what um, the cost of pla uh, you know, a plan on um, Shopify. So our plan, so a, a, a typical basic plan, is one set the cost of that of Shopify. Mm. And, so, and also we're looking at um, integrating local technology. So for instance, you're on Shopify, you, ca you have to, some of the payment platforms you're using as, um, or gateway, sorry, you're using as um, uh, PayPal, um, you know, card payments. Right. But in Ghana, we all know that we, we use mobile money a lot. So now people can sign up on our platform, use our platform and accept mobile money payments instantly you know so th that is I mean for us the pain points we are looking at is cost and appropriate technology you want uh, I mean FEC to be at the African uh, you know forefront yes. of e-commerce in Africa in terms of the impact uh, you make in the market what are the greatest obstacles that might you know block this vision for me I don't really see obstacles okay. I, I don't see challenges um, I feel my first startup Optimistic already. Optimistic person, yes. I like that. I feel my first startup already. Uh -huh. It gave me the foundation to start what I'm doing right now. What um, were you doing before? What did you do It before? was still in e-commerce. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a marketplace. So <laughs> I got to really learn about the, the market and all that. And for instance, I have, um, our platform is like worth $3,000, but I didn't pay a dime for that. Mm. I, you know, I was able to really um, uh, kind of, uh, I proposed to the, our development partners uh, with a deal, and then we went straight into it. Something that would cost me a lot, mm -hmm. I didn't pay a dime. So I mean, for me, I think every challenge is a learning curve, and um, uh, I, I'm re really looking at um, you know, getting some funding uh, very soon. For me, I think it's going to come, you know, like, are you putting proposals across? Definitely, so how are we getting a lot. The, yeah, are we getting the a lot of them. from? A lot of them. But you mentioned earlier you had partners in Europe. Yes, please. Mm. Yes. So um, they are my development partners uh, with the whole Minafisi thing. So then we have a standard platform that really works, you know, something that really works out there, but tweaked to our specifications, you know. So... I know the market opportunity in this, and I, I love what I'm doing, so mm. yeah. I, I don't think I have any qualms with uh, failures know, at failures. all. Not at all. Any no. advice for people watching us? 
Well, for young entrepreneurs, I guess because I'm young, um, I'll just say go for whatever you believe in. You know, um, I, I think right now, um, the fact that I'm even here shows that I'm making a bit of headway. You know, so just put in your best, and uh, yeah, something will happen for you. It's an exciting journey, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> It's great to have you yeah. and talk to you. And uh, so for all your e-commerce, right? Um, you, you what was it game in Afisi is the right yeah. way to go. If you want to reach him, you can get him on zero five zero eight five. Am I right? Eight zero five seven zero three five. Yes, please. right. Again, zero five zero eight zero five seven zero three five. And uh, Michael Asante to say thank you so much. Thank you so much. We'll be right much. back. Welcome back to The Hard Truth, and we are proudly brought to you by Murphy Holmes, Dawa Industrial City, and Paul's Fitness Gym. We are still celebrating SMEs, and uh, I have the Chief Executive Officer of MEPA, uh, Millicent Amankwa, with us. How are you, Millicent? I'm doing well. And how is MEPA doing? I'm doing great. Fantastic. Now, your company, MEPA Trading, uh, is into the sale of organic products. Why did you choose to enter into the, you know, this particular business, and is it yielding any results? Sure, it's it's not been easy though. But then um, I've realized in Ghana here, mm -hmm. this we are the consumption of chemicals is is way too much. So then I decided to go into organic foods because if we focus on that much more, I think it's going to help us health wise. Okay, organic food. What exactly are we talking about? What's organic? organic mm. um producing foods in a natural way without mm. involving chemicals i see so yeah. what is your product range and you know what has or uh, what goes into the producing and the packaging of your product um it's it's mainly um unrefined like my products are mainly can you mention some of these products you have share butter mm which is unrefined, just the natural one. And then I don't add any additives, no preservatives, just the raw speech mm. to produce the shea butter. And it can be edible too. It's good for consumption because the, there are no additives in them. I see, you can use to fry things. Fry and things. So shea butter and what? Just shea butter, and then I, I'm now into the Gary production. Okay. As we all know, Gary Mix has been in the system for mm. a while now. But so you are behind lately. the Gary Mix. Yes, I see. So, uh, what, what gave you the idea? I mean, you talked about um, uh, wanting to do natural stuff, but did you just wake up and say, "I want to go into organic product"? Mm, yeah, I I researched and I found out that the the way the research which we involve in chemicals and Product and fertilizers in produ producing our foods, it's it's causing us harm. We we might not see it now, but then later, some years in to future. come. Mm -hmm. Yes. So then I decided to go into this organic production. But let's talk about your Gary mix. There are several, you know, Gary products or even Gary mix on the market. Yes. What, what makes yours different or unique? Um, the packaging. Hmm. Um. I, I realized most of them have it in a sachet, so I decided to have this. So you didn't bring, bring us a sample. How can I have we a sample? Have a sample? Yes, I see. It comes in a cup, and the gari, sugar, milk powder, and then the granules. Mm. Oh, I can those see are the, on that. Yeah. Yeah. So those are us. the ingredients mm. in them. So I thought it's wise to add a spoon to it so that it can be taken anywhere. Anywhere, wh wherever you find yourself. But you, you don't just make the gari yourself. Do you, do you make the prepare the gari yourself? No, I don't produce it's the gari. It's just the packaging. Yes, the okay. Packaging. So, so do, do you do um, um, everything yourself? I'm looking at this. Is it that sure. you do it yourself or you have people, you know, who work under you, you employ people to, to help no, you do it? for now, I'm doing this on my own. Wow. So yeah. how many can you do in a day? In a day, if I, I don't have anywhere going, I can do 200 pieces mm. in a day. Mm. So, but if I have other busy schedules, I just do 50 based on the order. People do order for. Okay, it's based students. on orders. Yes, I see. 
do you have like a target market or do you mostly target your friends or some people you you know you know initially i targeted the students mm -hmm. but i realized gary is something that every home everyone needs everyone takes if not all of us some people most people la love gary mm. so i decided to package it this way neck up I, the sachet the one i have in sachet is for students and this one, this is, one for is for everybody <laughs> everybody can take this i see yeah. and then how do you find the business environment in ghana does the environment you know makes it easy for people like you to succeed or carry with your share but do you think our environment is okay or is conducive enough for you to succeed in it um, i think at the beginning of everything there are challenges mm. so with time i think i'll make it you make time, it yeah. fantastic again what would you like to see the government you know do to help some small businesses like you uh, that, that they are not doing right now what would you want government to do to help you i would love government i would love government to help us give us the opportunity encourage us and then gi give some form of if other big businesses are, are paying taxes mm. if if we are supposed to pay anything. It has to be minimal. Mm, very small, yes, right? Yes, very mm. small. Or um, better still, we nothing at all. Nothing at all. I see. Yeah, because we are just starting, and it, it's going to encourage we the youth to do something productive. Mm. Yes. Uh, what is the vision? I'm I'm looking at it. What is the vision? Do you see this business go the long haul? Sure. Yeah. So from five years from now, how do you see your business? Mm, producing into production, I'll, I'll be producing the gari myself, mm. producing basically almost all the ingredients myself, mm. and then having employees work under me in all the regions in Ghana and outside. So which one will be less expensive, going to buy the granite and, and, you know, getting it done properly and then getting the raw materials, that's the cassava and, and, sure. and yes, than just going to get the, the, the finished product. Which one will be less expensive? I think getting all the producing or everything myself will be less expensive. Mm. But as it stands now, thank you. As it stands now, huh? As it stands now, I'm I'm getting the gary from another source, and then the granules and basically everything. Mm -hmm. I'm not producing all of them myself. All the gary, the granules, I I buy them. So when will you start the you know producing everything yourself? Next year. Next year. Yes, Why? Yes. What's the challenge this year? Um, I have work, so then by next year I'll focus on this and make it a bigger business on my what, own. What other businesses do you do apart from this? Um, the share butter production mm -hmm. as well, and then I'm working. That's, yes, I'm working with the maritime and the processing on. Okay. Yes. So, so you do this in your spare time. Sure. People watching you and say, "Oh, I have a passion to do." you know something little or start a business what, what would you say w whatever that they have set their mind on they should just pursue it mm. not thinking of whatever because when i started this it wasn't easy at all people would give you names but you have to find a better like thing what? to do a beautiful girl like you why are you selling guy we like people people have this perception and as we are humans, you get people to talk about you, mm. whatever you do. Mm. So then they should just ignore whatever that anyone is going to say. And, just and take passion. the positive ones mm. and then move on. Mm. That's, that's all that they need to do. I yeah. see. So if you want to get in touch uh, with uh, Millicent, you can get her on 0240-361289, 0240 Ace nine. I already have my supper. This I will take right away. And uh, ZFAT Trading, the Chief Executive Officer of ZFAT Trading, is up next to stay. Welcome back to the Hard Truth, proudly brought to you by Murphy Homes, our industrial city and Paul's fitness gym. I don't know why I'm smiling. I guess I'm excited. We have, uh, you know, fantastic products coming out. And uh, we have the Chief Executive Officer of ZFAT Trading, 
Um, she is Fatima Zara Shadow. Welcome to the Hard Truth. Thank you. How are you? Fine, thank you. Let's just get right to it. Your company, you know, deals in the production of detergent. Yeah. Uh, you know, by the trade, you know, you say fat and all of that. I think you have, you know, Sapta. 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 Clean. Clean. How is your branding faring? Oh, okay. Um, Sapta Clean is a young brand produced by Zfat Trading. So, um... We are currently, let me say, on the low. We are still in the baby um, stages. Baby stages, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. So we currently have hand and dishwashing liquid. And we recently, last month, we came up with um, the hand sanitizer. So um, what I basically do is, because we are not up there yet, where we go on TV to make advertisements and all, I talk to friends about it and we get people to know the products by word of mouth recommendations referrals and also I'm um, active on social media so I have a social I have a Facebook and Instagram page where I have a following on um, on Facebook it's about it's over 800 um, followers as it stands now mm. so I have people um, asking and patronizing the products ba based on the recommendations I put up from, let's say I sell the product to someone, the person gives me a feedback, I put it up on my social media page. Mm. People see it, they want to try it. I make sure I make as much as noise as possible I see, but for I, people I want to, see. to know, what's, what's your background? Okay, I, I did public relations in school. Mm -hmm. Free school? Yes, I did pub Ghana Institute of Journalism. Okay. I studied public relations okay. and I did marketing and advertising, a bit of marketing and so advertising. So all the things in the world, why detergent? Well, um, it's how it started was interesting. Right. I belonged to an NGO and somewhere in 2016, we're going to, we were sponsoring some people for training. Soap making, drink making and whatnot. So... When I went there, I think the people weren't enough, so I'm like, okay, let me join. But I was working. And as at that time, I wasn't working. So I decided to join, and I was still at home. So I said, okay, let me just try and see, because we use soap at home. So mm -hmm. let me just try and see to make samples and mm -hmm. see how, how it will go. So I got the stuff, and I did it. So people gave me thumbs up. Mm -hmm. And so, I was so, still... so one year into the business, uh, how difficult is it for you as a startup? Hmm. It's um, it's interesting and difficult at the same time. <laughs> I see. In that um, before it's normal, before you trust a brand, it's sometimes difficult because you see you are used to other brands. So people want to buy what they've been seeing, no matter how good yours is. So convincing people to buy it sometimes is difficult. Mm. Yes. But I think, but when they get it, they like it because I make sure it's of quality. Mm. But, but again, there are several products on the market, detergent products on the market. Mm -hmm. what, what makes yours different and why should I leave what I buy to get yours? Okay, so with Sapta Clean, it's, it has a global appeal. I, I don't, I make sure I, I don't let it look like a local product. Mm. Can I see a sample? Yes, sure. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm, go on. So it's, it's made locally, but I make sure it has an international appeal. And if you use it, you so will what testify. Is the, what is the international appeal about it? Tell us, maybe. When you look at, let's say, when you look at um, the locally made mm -hmm. um, detergent, or let me say, this is the hand wash. This so hand wash. this is the hand mm -hmm. wash. We have the regular, the regular ones, which is, it's very, you see one, one that is thick, right. but does not lather well. Mm -hmm. This is thick, and it also lathers well. Mm -hmm. The smell is on a different scale. Mm, yes. That's true. So when you use it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even have to talk much. I just yeah. give you a sample, and when you get it, that's just it. Mm, it's not bad. It, it, it's minty fresh. It's exactly. Minty. Yes, right. and I'm coming up with the herbal formula too. I see. Yes. Your, your vision is to become a leading brand uh, or name in Ghana with regards to uh, the things you need to exactly. households and co uh, corporate cleaning. 
how do you hope to achieve that? Yes, so as, as I stated earlier, from our baby stages, and we, are, we try to do research in everything we are doing. And aside the hand washing, we want to be the first thing when it comes to um, household, uh, household cleaning and corporate cleaning. So we are doing everything possible to have every product for everyone. To talk of bleach, hand wash, sanitizer, antiseptic, and everything, and give um, our customers the top-notch services they want or they need and they deserve. Mm -hmm. We don't joke with our customers. I see. So, exactly. And then again, your aim is to expand your business to serve the need of exactly. customers and you know, uh, to create employment. How are you working towards you know, achieving this too? Currently, um, currently, I made a call for sales um, persons. Right. Yes. In as much as um, I've not grown to the extent that um, uh, we've not grown to the extent that we are, we can employ other people, but people are still unemployed. People finish um, the university, um, university high even yeah the high schools. Mm. There's a there's more time for them to be at home before they go to the universities. So why don't you um, train them or even give them the opportunity to sell? In as much as they are going to make some small stipends out of it, they would also learn mm -hmm. and also um, build themselves. But do you do this yourself or you have people do it for you? I do it together with the team. Mm. But you can do this alone. Exactly. I see. Your distribution is done on the you know, base of orders you mentioned, exactly. word of mouth and all. How frequently do you get these orders? Um, I get weekly orders. Weekly orders. So yes. how many can go in a week? This week, for instance, I have I have an order for um, th uh, these um, th about three cartons for this ones, mm. and I have um, the individual. I make five liters to five liter gallons, and I mm. have orders for that as well. So, mm. um, as it stands now, I make um, delivery to individuals more mm -hmm. than shops. So I'm now concentrating on that, looking on, on forward to being yes, exactly. So. Mm. I'm currently on the individual level. Hmm. Is there, uh, how does the future look for you? Does it look bright? Do you think that uh, your detergent business is going to get to the international or even sure. the African market? Sure. Hmm. I have hope. I, the future looks bright mm -hmm. for me. Uh, how do you know it looks bright? Yes, because um, I don't joke with quality. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing. And if your product is of quality, no matter how or where you stay, that form or wherever you are now, mm. even if it's going to take you 30 years or 20 years or 25 years, and you are hopeful that what you are doing is fine and good and it's top notch, then you don't have any problem. Mm. I, I don't think I have a problem. So I'll get there. What are we doing with the certificates you got from school? Are we throwing the away and then concentrating no, I'm working. on this one? You're working. Where do you work? I work with a uh, loan recovery firm. Okay. Yes. So is there going to get to, or would there be a time where you would actually ditch that work and concentrate full time on this? We are still there, so <laughs> I'm, I'm still building on that and building on this. Is that what will even... make you stop the regular job for, for this? Uh, I think it's, well, it's all about time. You understand? So let's say I weigh. Say it again. You, you weigh. Yeah, right. you would have to weigh. Because as, as it stands now, I'm being exposed. I'm learning on the other field. Because um, it's my pu public relations has been my passion and mm -hmm. dealing with people. And coupled with this work, you're still dealing with people right. and everything. So you incorporate whatever you learn from here and there from school mm -hmm. and you fuse it in. Mm -hmm. So uh, how much is SEPTA clean going for? This one is only five CDs. SEPTA clean, uh, five CDs from Zeta. Is it, what's the name of the company again? Z Fat. Z Fat Trending, right? Thank you so much, Fatima. Zara Shadow Thank for coming the hard truth. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Uh, you're still watching the hard truth. Doc has Abukari, Chief Executive Officer of uh, Dottis Foundation, is here. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the hard truth. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm smiling. I think you're so pretty. I like your color in it. Thank you. You're I like too. black beauty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank now, don't you. Now, tell me, what, did, what inspired you to set up the Daughters Foundation? 
Okay, actually, I had I there was an incident that happened. Mm. As a child, I've, I've always known that I love giving. I was that child that would go to school with sweets and so many things, and I don't even come back with one mm. because I prefer giving out to friends. So I knew deep within me I was a giver. But there was something that happened one day that pushed me to start up a foundation. Mm. I went to church, and after church service, it was late. It was Which church? Assemblies of God okay. in Tamale. All right. So it was a church rehearsal, I think. So after the rehearsals, I, I came out of the church trying to get a taxi back home. Mm -hmm. And there was this man sitting by the roadside. He, his state was, it was bad. He, he couldn't walk. He was crawling. His clothes were tattered. And he looked so dirty. Mm. As I passed by, he signaled me. And he pointed to his mouth. Normally, everybody you know that you're trying to say you're hungry. Even though I was scared, I went close and I tried to find out what was wrong with him and he kept pointing to his mouth. So I knew he was hungry. I bought him food and I got him water. The speed in which he was eating the food was, it was a night. I, I was so touchy. So mm. since then I decided to set up a foundation and I, I was in level 300 back then. So which, I- Which school? University for Development Studies. Mm. So I went back to school, I spoke to some friends of mine. My roommates was the first person I spoke to and she bought into the idea and that's how I started the foundation. So, so tell me, what's the foundation really about? The foundation is just to be a voice to the voiceless, be hope to the hopeless mm. and just l sh lend a hand to people who I need. I see. But, but what, what programs have you embarked on and what kind of impact have you had? Okay, we've embarked on several uh, programs. And the first one was called Smile Project. Mm -hmm. That was the first project in 2016. It was in WA because my school was located in WA. And we went to a particular community. It's called Bamaho. And we gathered kids. There were up to 800 kids. Mm -hmm. That particular day, we fed all these 800 kids with food. We got sponsorship from other companies, mm -hmm. and we fed them with the food, and we got them some drinks and water. That was the first project, and we've embarked on educational programs. iSchool is an example. iSchool is just to get to rural communities and reach out to young ladies, promote them through giving them educational materials and supporting them in their education. Mm. Because when you get to the cities, you think ladies or girls are marching boot to boot with guys in climbing the educational ladder. But it doesn't happen like that in the rural communities. Ladies are still confined into the kitchen and the boys are led to lead the road. So we get to the rural communities, identify certain schools. We get there, pick out the ladies, give them educational material, books, pens, and other things they will need. Then we also take them through health talk about their personal hygiene, personal hygiene and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, how do you get you know, support and, and funding for your foundation and its activities? Mm -hmm. Is that difficult? Very, hmm. very difficult. I think that's one of the difficult parts of running a charity foundation without really being known by people or you're not in the limelight. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. Even though I write the letters, I follow up. Some do help, but some, they won't just listen to you because you are not known. Mm. And people think you are trying to fraud them or just take their money and spend. So, again, yes, exactly. So how do we change that mentality? People have set foundations, they go for sponsorships. Institutions think that, oh, this, this is a fraud. So how do we change that mentality? Yes, even though there are people that fraud, they are genuine people. And if you're running a foundation, you have to have evidence. You go with your evidence, that will prove that, oh. Which is what? Go with pictures, you go with videos, or previous projects you've done. Mm -hmm. That would serve as evidence of your projects mm -hmm. and not just coming to get their money to squander or something like that. Are you based in, uh, wow, are you based in Accra? I'm based in Accra now. Okay, so what happens? Uh, you, the foundation, the activities are mainly here so what i mean do you neglect those in the no areas the foundation moves with me if okay. i'm in war the foundation is in war so we do programs 
at various regions. But for now, we are working on a project in Accra here, which is a street feeding. Mm -hmm. So uh, after every project, we try to look out to other regions that we can identify certain things we can give solutions mm. to. So, so you're talking about the street feeding. How are we making that happen? Yes, uh, uh, the street feeding, I named it Fist C. Feed Every Amazing Street Child. Mm. Yes, and it's on the 29th of September this mm -hmm. year. And we are feeding street children from Medina to 37. I see. All of them? All of them. We're looking at 1,000 children. How? Where are we getting the money from? I started writing sponsorship letters, and mm -hmm. I'm getting the green light. So hopefully it would source out and be good. What would you tell people at home, especially, uh, you know, corporate uh, institutions, uh, you are a small, uh, you know, foundation. Yeah. What would you tell them? I, I would tell them they should try and lend support to people that come to them to be of help to others. Because they are at the top and people are just striving to make others happy or to fend for others. So they shouldn't block us out when we come to them, even though there are people that would deceive and aren't true about their purpose. Yeah they come for sponsorship but they are genuine people they should make their background checks on these people and really help out because there are so many people we need to touch in the world mm. and ghana in particular is not an exception there are so many people out there who need help but there's nobody to help so they should please give us the support we need and together would we'll make Ghana a better place and the program is happening on the 29th of september yes. from madina to 37 it's yes. called the street C. yes Street C, right? So, if you want to, uh, you know, make any donation to Dorothy's Foundation, you can reach Doc Hasa Bukhari on 0240-840192. Again, 0240-840192. Mobile money, right? Yes. She receives mobile money on our networks. Yes. Our networks. <laughs> <laughs> Dorothy, thank you so much. Thank you right. for having me. Um, we have the Chief Executive Officer of Alpha White back after the break. Do stay. Welcome back to The Hard Truth, and we are proudly brought to you by Murphy Homes, Dawa Industrial City, and Pulse Fitness Gym, marketing consultant for Alpha White Park Academy, Mrs. Josephine Odum. It's our final guest for the day. <laughs> Welcome to The Hard Truth, Josephine. Thank you. Josephine, tell me, what was the idea, you know, behind the establishment of Alpha White Park Academy, and how has the school developed over the years? Okay. Yeah, the motivation, also the idea behind it, I think it came about, okay, we actually started it as a homeschool, like a homeschool, but we realized that most Ghanaian curriculum structure are mostly uh, kind of true and poor. Mm. You give and you have to produce what you've given. So we thought of coming up with something different this time around. Uh, we believe that every human being has something unique. So why not stimulate that unique thing in the person mm. so that the person can come out and be natural and do something exceptional? Mm. So that was the basis, the, the you know, motivation behind Alpha, Alpha uh, you know, White Park, Park Academy. Academy. Right. So yes. the, the, you know, the drawing point of any school is the infrastructure and the, you know, the academic performance. Yeah. How does our White Park Academy, you know, measure up in this? Yes, we have all the facilities. The facilities that um, a parent will trust that the child will have everything. Yeah. I mean, an absolute education. Our library is stuffed with the necessary books. Our uh, computer lab. Uh, we have uh, other core cool curriculum like tennis, uh, football. And we are even in the process of in introducing swimming, piano, uh, music. They have music. I see. Yes. Interesting stuff like, happening yes. there. Yes, but yes. again, how is your, you talked about your curricula and all these other things you add in, but I want to know how your curricula, you know, it's measuring up and how is it contributing to the development of the potential of your student? All oh, right. We were very fascinated with Montessori approach mm. you know the Montessori style so with our basics like the, the nursery the kg mm. yeah the preschool 
we strictly use the Montessori approach, which is self-learning. We don't impose. The child develops by itself. We just put out the stimulants, like the things that the child would need to, you know, to bring out the best in him. Like, like what? Give us a clear example. Like we have something we call everyday living activity. It's, it's like that we, we link, it's, it's, it's a form of study that links the home to the school. So every child that comes to school for the first time will feel like I'm still at home mm. because children basically doesn't adopt easily to change. Mm -hmm. So any child will see that when you receive your child, from knowing you for the, for the first time, the child will cry. Mm. Uh, so which means something new has been introduced to the child. So we adopt that strategy that the child comes to school, but yet still feels that he's at home and feels comfortable That's for the nice. first time. Yes. That's and nice. we have other things like uh, sensorial, which stimulate the senses of the child, or the five senses mm. stimulates the child, and all other activities. Mm. So we have, we have a well-finished room that the child comes, the child has the liberty to touch, use anything within a certain period and no restrictions i'm curious again what is the drawing point of your school meaning what does it have that others don't have yes that was what i'm trying to build mm. looking at the environment the whole castle i can say that that style that method that we are using we stand out and when you come to the primary and the gss mm -hmm. we use the Ghanaian curriculum but we also adapt we've also adapt the global you know curriculum the uh, relevant ones like the British, the South Africans, you know, good practices in educational. What is wrong with our Ghanaian or, you know, what we have here in Ghana? There is nothing wrong with ours. Mm. But as I said earlier on, we adopt best practices. When you come early, we introduce the Montessori system, which is self-discipline. The child adopts self-discipline. So the child knows mm. that this is not good, this is not, uh, uh, this is good and this is not good. And we have another thing that we do Collectively with the children, we all decide on the rules and regulations of the class. So the children themselves, we even caution you, to, caution you that this is not done here. So how many, how many class to a teacher? How many students to a teacher? Ideally, we have two teachers to a class: mm -hmm. the teacher and the assistant. Mm -hmm. Yes, but the, the size of a class, a maximum of thirty in a class. I see that. Let's talk about affordability, uh, you know, of your fees and how flexible are the payment? It is the cheapest that you can find, even though we give the best education mm. within, you know, our environment, within our domain. We give the best, yet it's very affordable, very, very affordable. Mm. So at yeah. the moment, we are taking around 300, 400, mm. which is the, but, you know, we are entering into another mm. academic year, which is the, there's a possibility mm. of a little bit adjustment. Mm. Uh, mm. So you can see very affordable. Let, let's look at the location. Where is the school located? Yeah, the school is located in Aquile, Kaswa, Aquile, behind um, Credits Union Training School. Mm. Yeah, behind Credits Union Training School. There is a church close, Living Word Church. Uh, it's a very popular school within. You know, within Kaswa. Uh, yes, I see. Within but Aquile, that's trade. Uh, credit trade, Union. Credit Union, yeah. Okay, but uh, um, I, I also want to you know, be in the minds of parents who says, oh, I live around Wager. Okay. Do we have shuttles? Exactly. Do we have exactly. buses? We have buses, have, yes. Mm. We have a very big ba bus with, you know, um, people to guide the children, yeah, conductors and that to protect the children. Very good fits buses mm. for the children. A lot of security. Yeah. I mean, we people yeah, we go do, to school and then... We do have security. Yeah. We do have security to protect the children. Well-fenced school. Mm. Have security and for that you can be assured of the safety of your child and then for lunch and uh, you know it's not yes, we, we provide lunch for the school we provide lunch but I uh, parent pay it's on ba uh, daily basis weekly uh, whatever way you can pay to make it comfortable for mm. you so yeah. tell parents so people who want to take decisions on taking their wars to different school what would you tell them I would tell them that we give the best mm -hmm. we give the best within the area even from dance, so we give a higher class, a school that you'll find in maybe the first class environment. That's what we give. But because of the environment, the Kaswa environment, we find ourselves we are making it affordable so we can give the best quality education 
in an affordable way. So I've advised that parents shouldn't hesitate, shouldn't even think twice bringing their children there mm. because it's the best. They shouldn't compromise their child's education. But Alpha White Park Academy is the best any parent should think about. And uh, do you have scholarship programs for needy uh, you know, students? Yes, we do. We have scholarship for brilliant children and we, I mean, with a needy background. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do have. We do have. Okay, so if you're looking for a very serene environment and a place that combines, uh, you know, our curricula with other other curriculars, uh, the best way to go is uh, Alpha White Park Academy. It's located at Kaswa uh, Aquile Junction uh, behind the Credit Union. Uh, you can get them on 0244 188045. Again, 0244 188045 or 05022. Six one nine four four again, zero five zero two two six four nine four four. Thank you so much, Josephine. Yes. Josephine Odumo, Mrs. Josephine Odumo is the marketing consultant for Alpha White Park, and it's been an interesting night. Uh, we have um, Septa, Septa Clean. It's the new baby or new detergent in town, and I think they they have their uh, you know. Um, hand sanitizer it's going for three Ghana cities and the soap is for five Ghana cities and uh this is the gary mix i have my stuff already i'm going to have this right away the gary mix is only i've forgotten but i'm sure it's super affordable and i think she also has the very natural share butter she said you can even use it to cook you've been watching the hard truth my name is nana kusia kunidua santa samuels and uh, we are proudly brought to you by murphy homes Dawa Industrial City and Paul's Fitness Gym. Catch your piece of the program tomorrow morning. It's at 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good night. Bye.